let's go um, to Exodus, the 29th chapter. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to continue where we left off last week. Uh, talking about the inauguration <clears throat> of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. And um, there is so much here. It is, this is just one of the richest portions of the Word of God. And, you know, the, basically, you know, the whole Bible is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every, book, every word from Genesis to Revelation is a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. The tabernacle is a picture, as we've learned, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you understand there are many things about the tabernacle that when you understand, it'll make so many other things make a lot of sense. You know, right. for instance, and I was just thinking about this. This is not really my lesson, but this is just a for instance. Who recognizes, what is this? Star of David. That's the Star yeah. of David. Israel's sign. Yeah, Israel's sign. Would you like to know where they got that? Yes. Come on now. Amen. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> That's the tabernacle, right? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> this was the symbol of, of the worship of the temple, right? Right. There was the courtyard down here, and then the holy place and the holy of holies up here. And <clears throat> there were, I'll use a different color marker, <clears throat> two experiences down here in the courtyard. Right now. There was blood. Mm -hmm. There was fire. Y'all see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there was water. These are the three elements down here in the courtyard. Now, <clears throat> you also have, this is very obvious here. There's a bar, a horizontal bar. But when you take the candlestick and join it to the Ark of the Covenant, and the table of showbread and join it to the Ark of the Covenant, what do you have? Mm -hmm. A seal. You have two triangles. Mm -hmm. You drop the upper over the lower, and you have a Star of David. Now, Old, old, old. Back prior to the time of Jesus. <laughs> I love your key play. <laughs> Back prior to the time of Christ. Before uh, you, you will find, and you can find, it's hard to find, but you can find the Mogan David with a cross in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Very ancient. Now once... Jesus died on the cross, and all of that happened. They rejected Jesus as their Messiah, so they took this out. Mm. And they'll leave it blank, or sometimes they'll put a menorah in the middle of it. Right. Have you seen that? Yeah. yeah. They'll put the menorah in the center field. Um, so, <clears throat> anyway, like I'm saying, there's so many things when you understand the intricacies of the tabernacle that makes so many other things make sense. And I'm just mentioning this because that I want to go somewhere with you tonight that uh, I believe is going gonna, is gonna to bless you. You all with me? Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. All right. It's easy on this. All right. Praise the Lord. We're in Exodus, the 29th chapter. <clears throat> And I'll start in verse 1. And he says, And this is the thing that thou shalt do to them, to hallow them to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullet and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread and cakes unleavened, tempered with oil, and wafers anointed with oil of wheat and flour shalt thou make them. 
of that right there is enough to blow your socks right off. Look, look at this. Um, mm -hmm. So powerful. Yeah, it's powerful. I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking, sorry. <laughs> but my, my head literally yeah. is about to explode. <laughs> I'm just trying to think how to, how to approach this. <clears throat> Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just, do it. Let's just get into it. That's right. Jump in. Amen. Jump, jump. Now, there were two things that he said that I want in order to bring my priests into the fullness of their calling, to sanctify them and to qualify them to minister unto me Come on. as a priest. Mm. Now this, this not only speaks of, to us, of this gives us a type and a shadow of how Jesus right. was inaugurated into the Melchizedek priesthood, and he became a priest. Mm. The Bible says over in the book of Hebrews, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Right. Amen. And I've mentioned that before, the Melchizedek priesthood, is prior to the Levitical priesthood. And so he, so he inducted him. So we see these types and shadows. Remember I talked to you about the fractal. It never changes. It just continues to unfold and unfold and unfold in a greater and greater and greater measure. So now let's go back. Keep your finger there. Keep your finger right there before we go too much further. Let's go to Genesis the 14th chapter. <clears throat> mm, 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 mm. And, Lord, there's so much here. Okay. Um, now, I'll just paraphrase because I want you to, I'm not going to go in, we're not going to study this chapter in detail right now. At some time, I would like to study in detail with you, but this is after Abraham went and rescued Lot. How many of y'all remember that story? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all remember the story? He rescued Lot out of Sodom. Yeah. The kings, there were four right. Babylonian kings right. that had taken Lot captive. And Abraham went and he fought a battle and set him free. And so after he had done all, poured out this great sacrifice mm. for his brother. Right? Lot was his nephew. And of course, they were family, but they didn't get along that well, if you remember the story. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> and so, so they, they, you know, Lot said, Well, I'm just going to go over here. I'll take my herds and my cattle and I'll go over here to Sodom. And Abraham said, I'll take whatever's left. And then God, you know, allowed these, these Babylonian kings to come and capture Lot and capture the city of Sodom, capture his family. And so Abraham goes out to battle to pour out his life to help somebody who really didn't deserve it. Right. Who'd really been kind of a stinker, right? And so, so here they are, and Abraham goes out and he pours out his life. And then on his way back, now after he's poured out, he's exhausted, he's fought, he's labored. Verse 18, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him. And we go on there. But he met this, this person named Melchizedek. Now, I'd like to study that in detail with you sometime, because the Apostle Paul talks about it in the book of Hebrews. This Melchizedek was the, that there were actually two Melchizedeks in the Word of God. People get confused about that. There is Melchizedek, the heavenly father, mm -hmm. who the apostle Paul said was without beginning of life or end of days. That can be nobody but the father. Yeah. He's the only being in the universe or outside the universe or beyond the universe that has no beginning of life and no end of days. That can only be one person. That's the father. But then he said to his son, he said, thou art my son. 
This day have I begotten thee. Right. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. In other words, he begot a son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and conferred his priesthood upon his son. Yeah. Man, I, I, I hope I'm making sense. Am I making sense, Brother Sanders? Yes, help you jump in and help me now. If you think I'm getting lost. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. Okay. So powerful. So he brought forth two things. Bread and wine. Now, what is wine a picture of? Blood. Blood. Yeah. When you when you're served bread and wine, what does that sound like to you? Communion. Communion. Right. Mm -hmm. It's communion. So wine or blood, they are synonymous mm -hmm. in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. They're a metaphor for one another. Wine and blood. Blood and wine. So Melchizedek brought in brought out bread and wine. In other words, Melchizedek gave Abraham communion. Right. And it was this bread and this wine right. that he gave him that began to regenerate Abraham's body. Mm. That began to change his body. Wow, awesome. And began to change Sarah's body. Because they were old. Ooh, they were wow. in the 90s. Yeah. And, and, and don't tell me they had a child and they were all just, you know, shriveled up walking. No, something began to happen in their bodies. Mm. They began to rejuvenate and regenerate. I mean, there's all kinds of things about that. You can look at where Sarah went down to Egypt and she was like 90 years old. And Pharaoh said, oh, she's so beautiful. I got to have her. Yeah, that's it. And remember that? Y'all remember yeah. the story? Mm -hmm. She was so beautiful. She was 90 years old. And Pharaoh said, I want her. And Abraham said, she's my sister. <laughs> yeah. She was a 90-year-old woman. She was beautiful. Something had happened in their bodies because they had been eating of this bread and wow. this blood. They had eaten. Oh, Shemahim. And you said, well, what kind of, what, what, what was that? Well, what, let me ask you. The, the communion that he gave, that Melchizedek gave to Abraham, it was a picture of what? The blood and the bread that Jesus gave to his disciples, right? Right. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if he gave this blood and this bread, and he said, take eat, this is my body. This is the blood of the covenant that is shed for you, right? Right. And remember, this was before he went to the cross. Mm. So Abraham gave blood and, uh, uh, or Melchizedek gave Abraham wine and bread. Mm -hmm. where did, where, what kind of, Jesus hadn't gone to the cross. The lamb, where, where, where did he get that? What kind of blood and bread was that? Mm -hmm. Well, think about this with me. Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So this substance, this bread and this wine that Melchizedek yeah, gave to him the was the, the creative substance of the lamb that had been slain from the foundations of the world. And he brought forth this bread and wine and it did something to Abraham. <laughs> Changed him. So in other words, even though it's a smaller taste, but it's different. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's not purely symbolic. We do communion. There's, there's a thing. Let me tell you something about communion. There's only 14 people that I know of in the Bible that the Lord personally served them communion. There was Abraham. There were 12 disciples. That's 13. Mm -hmm. And then, let's jump over to, 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 to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> one of the 
requirements in the Word of God, and I, I'll find the script. I don't have the scripture marked, or, but there is a scripture that shows us that one of the requirements or the qualifications for being an apostle is to have seen the Lord, to have literally seen the Lord. That is an apostle. You don't become an apostle until you have seen the Lord. Right. Well, well, Elijah was a prophet. He had the office of a prophet. The apostle is is a different thing. It's a different office. But yeah, there are very few. Yes. But don't people pay to live as apostles now? Hmm? Aren't there people out there carrying the label of apostles now? Yes. Yeah. Maybe they've seen the Lord. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not here to judge. I'm but you call asking, yourself an apostle? Right, yeah, I am going to start asking now. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people put that title on. I'll there. find yes. that scripture for you because I'm giving you something without any scriptural basis, yes. and I need to give you the scripture. Yes. Um, does anybody have an app on their phone? Yes. But find, uh, look up, seeing the Lord. Seeing the Lord, and there's a scripture in one of Paul's writings where he said, uh, "As one who has seen the Lord." Seeing the Lord. <clears throat> Let's go to, a, I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, I'm sorry, second, I'm sorry. Wait, I said it's first, I'm sorry. Forgive me. 1 Corinthians 11. <clears throat> and he says in verse 23, now, in 23 through 26, the Apostle Paul is giving the church instructions on how to take communion. Right? And he says, <clears throat> For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. So he's saying, hey guys, I told y'all about this before. And I, have, I received it. Did he, he didn't say, I received it from Peter and John and James who were there that night at the Last Supper. Paul wasn't there. He wasn't there. But he says, I have received of the Lord. Hmm. In other words, the Lord came to me and gave me, served me this bread and wine. And he begins to describe his personal communion with the Lord here. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Mm -hmm. Has anybody found that scripture? Found a bunch. Okay. Found one here where it talks about Jacob. It says, I saw the Lord face to face. Uh -uh. No, this is over in like Paul's in the New Testament. Oh, the New Testament. Yeah, go all the way. Into, I, I'll, I'll find it next time. I could find it on that phone, but that phone is being used as a camera right now. <laughs> and what's the app called? I use Blue Letter Bible. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a free app. Okay. Um, and it's it's really good. You can you know it's got all kind of it's really a great study tool because it can give you. Like, you can look up your Strong's Concordance numbers. You can look up your commentaries. It's got tons of stuff in there. Oh, wow. It's a great Bible study tool. Yeah, Blue Letter Bible. So, <clears throat> anyway, so he says here, so anyway, the Apostle Paul, so we have Abraham, the 12 disciples, right. and the Apostle Paul, He's learning. Look at him. He's, just, looking, he's looking at the board. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, 
He participates in classes too. He is. The, he's. A, I'm good into boy. this word. He's. I'm into this word. I'm a good student. Yeah. He really <laughs> likes place value. He comes out for that lesson every time. Does he really? Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah. cool. That is amazing. I'm just glad he's settling down. I was worried he's going to climb on Bernie for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll be like. I know. That's what I was worried about. I'm good right now. Good. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, so yeah, there we have there we have fourteen people wow. that were served communion personally by the Lord. <laughs> you know, Abraham was the father of the 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 of faith mm -hmm. in the old covenant. There's so much about Abraham. Yeah. If you ever understand how significant Abraham is and why God sure. told him you get out of Ur of the Chaldees, get out of there. You need to go and go somewhere else, and I'm going to show you another land. Mm. And through you, I'm going to birth a nation of people that are going to be unlike any other people on the face of the earth. There's so much there. There's so much there. Anyway, that hurts my head. Uh, <laughs> I hear you, brother. Um, so, all right, let's go back to Exodus 29. Y'all bear with me. All right, we're just taking our time. Y'all feel free to jump in here now if you got questions or uh, comments or whatever, you know. So, so he said now, chapter 29, verse 1, And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them, to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock, a red marker. I have a red marker. <laughs> he said, I want a bullock. And what did he say next? Two rams. Two rams. Young. Young. Well, two rams without blemish. Two rams. He said, I want a ram for a whole burnt offering. WB for whole burnt. Yeah. And he said, I want another ram well, for a peace offering. Well, come on. Now, this is so That's powerful. Good stuff. There, the, 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 the parallels of what you're going to see here mm. to the communion table will absolutely blow your mind. <laughs> and this will help you to understand communion in a greater way than you've ever understood before. The eating of communion has to do with saying, Lord, I want to eat your body. Mm -hmm. I want to drink your blood until that broken body becomes part of who I am. And, you know, the old saying, you are what you eat. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As we feast on him, as we eat of his broken body through faith, yeah. and we drink his blood through, what did he say? This is the New Testament in my blood. Mm -hmm. Or the New Covenant, the Word of God is the blood. <clears throat> and you drink that blood. Through, through taking him in. I'm not talking about cannibalism. And I know it's kind of rough. <laughs> I don't want to break blood. <clears throat> but he's drawing an analogy here. He's speaking to the disciples who would have understood a lot more than, than a Gentile, us Gentiles would have understood. Yeah. Because they understood the old covenant, the old tabernacle, the old patterns, and all that law. They understood every bit of it. So he said, I want, I want bullet blood. I want a whole burnt offering for a ram, and I want peace offering, a, a ram for a peace offering. So three kinds of blood mm. right there. He said, and then, verse 2, he said, I want unleavened bread. You unleavened bread. He said, I want Cakes unleavened. Cakes tempered with oil and wafers. Hmm. I want three kinds of bread and three kinds of blood on the altar. <laughs> To bring my priest well, into their office. Go for it. Science teacher moment. Okay. So, in nature, and I, learned, I, I, 
actually learned this from when I was decorating cakes, but when you go to form like a frosting, a, a rose, an icing rose, you do it in groups of three, and you build the whole thing in groups of three. Okay. So if you start looking in nature, the reason you do that, that that way to make it look like a rose is because in nature, when you look at it, a lot of things are in groups of three. Yes. All throughout nature. Just. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We talked about, you know, as the speakers, you don't give them one or two points if they don't want to have it. Yeah, it's five plus or minus two, exactly. So I was wondering, why is on east? What is so significant of it? Of the east? Not east, right? On Levitt means no east. Oh, no yeast. Yes. Okay. <laughs> because, I mean, oh. the reason is because the first time I read it, I was like, what, <laughs> Chinese can digest it. Right. Yeast. Okay. Whew. I, yeast is. I have that for <clears throat> years and years in my mind. Nobody cares. Okay. I'll give you the I'll give you the reader's digest, okay. and then sometime we'll go back and study it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the yeast is a picture of two things in the Word of God. Two different things. Yeast is a picture of pride. Because what does yeast do? Pug. Right. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Makes it swell up. Jesus told the. Disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Ooh. Remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, beware of that leaven or that pride okay. of the Pharisees. Makes you puff up. Yeah. And, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And remember on Passover, he told them, and, and if you're familiar with the Jewish traditions, on Passover or before Passover, they will go through their house. They will clean out all their cabinets. They're looking for one spot of leaven. Any leaven. It's a picture to us of how we are to examine ourselves. That's powerful. Wow. Uh, yeah. And say, Lord, show me where my pride is. Uh, is there one spot of pride in my house? My house. This house right here. One spot. I'm looking for the one thing of pride. Lord, get rid of it. I want it out. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Save me. They took all the leaven of pride out. But leaven also represents, on the good side, it represents resurrection power. Because Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and she put in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened. Or the whole thing was, so he's talking about, he's not talking about pride in that instance, he's talking about resurrection Ooh. power. So when you get out the leaven and the Passover lamb dies, then there's another kind of leaven called the resurrection glory of the Father who will raise. That's what raised Jesus up. It was the leaven of the rest, the kabod glory that stood him up from death. And so that's why unleavened bread was used in the Passover. That's why he fed. The, the disciples, he broke that unleavened bread. Bread that is simple, thin, no pride, just, yeah. Yeah, does that, does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay, and there's so many mysteries to what I just told you. There's like, for some reason last night, I got ready to go to bed and I was laying down. It just confirms everything. The Lord said, um, it's time to clean your house. Mm. In other words, it's time to clean, clean up, clean out what is offending you. Because of where I'm taking you, you got to first clean, clean house. Wow. And then she asked that question, and that's why I'm sitting here trying not oh. to explode. Oh, it's, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even Abraham, it's time to clean you're house. saying, you know, how he great. served. Mm -hmm. He served Lot. He made, he made room. He he made, he, he made room for the present for, for <laughs> right yeah. what that's it yeah i was trying to figure out why god why are you saying this i don't know what you're yeah. doing for me I yeah mean, what do you want me to do you know? yeah. yeah and i was like this is something going on here <laughs> make room for me that's right now i see yeah. it i see that's really what's going so on powerful. there's so many things here my mind is just exploding i know i'm so here. here yeah Ooh. oh uh, uh, uh. It's funny what you said too about the leaven, you know, because a couple years ago we went over to Florida and we said, "Oh my gosh, I can't see this right now." And they've been scouring bread, 
and how they didn't use traditional yeast. They they left the flour and the water out on the counter, and it would actually pick up the yeast in the air. Really? In the home. Hmm. It would pick up the yeast in the air in the home. So them going and cleaning like they did. Yeah. Would you tell there was no yeast in the air. No yeast. In the atmosphere. Yeah. That's what he told Israel in Egypt when they got ready to leave. Yeah. The chew the lamb. That's right. Shoes on the feet, stab in the hand, and getting ready to go. Mm. Mm. Woo! It's powerful. There's so many pictures <laughs> of what we're dealing with right well, here. You could just go everywhere. <laughs> That's how you know you find a true That's principle. It. That's it. Because it's like, oh, it's there, it's there. And they go, oh, yeah, it's there. It's like they there. notice it's it. Fits. Yeah. Exactly. But you never did. Exactly. Going back to the threes, that's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. That's that's like, oh my god. That's right away I thought I was gonna speak to the everywhere. And then it was the exactly. It's the pattern because he's a god of, of order, so mm -hmm. it just perfect everywhere. balance. Just goes out in the threes as you go down there. Yeah. 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 It all starts with even the, created the, the Trinity. Threes. Father, that's Son, it. Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Boom. Three. Try you. And out of that. You know, mm -hmm. there's, and you've probably seen, there's a video I watched one time, it's a documentary, I forget, it's about the numbers in nature, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, they talked about, like, the bee, the beehive, you put these two together, what do you have? Mm -hmm. A honeycomb. Yep, and mm -hmm. there's your threes. Your group of threes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it, the threes are there everywhere, if you look, sometimes it looks bigger, but it's really there if you start to look. Yeah. Well, how in the world is well, look, eight. Good day. It's a hexagon. <laughs> yeah, it's eight. Octagon. Is it eight? Is it no, a honeycomb is six. Is it six? Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. Let's Google it. Okay. Google it. We're going to ask Alexa. Google it. Hey, I can be corrected. I was wrong yeah. one time before, but like in, it was like 19... The last time I thought about it, I think I tried to use it as a geometry lesson. I admit, I don't get too close. Check it out. I think it's a, it's a hexagon. They yeah. all yeah, try right. to hit me. <laughs> you are a beekeeper, so... Right, but... How many see. size does a... Size, sorry. Size of a honeycomb. The inside. I know, all the... Yeah. Sorry, here we go. Um, six. Six. Six? The first okay. hit says six, and it's not Wikipedia, so oh, okay. math answers wow. looks like it's six there, too. It would have to be six. It's six. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. It yep. is. Six the honeycomb sided. is six-sided. I remember that from yeah. when I taught geometry in my student Ooh. teaching here. Yeah. But there's so many things. The numbers, you know, and we talked about that one time. We touched on the numbers in the Word yes. of God. Mm -hmm. When you start relating the numbers in the word to the numbers in nature, it's like you have threes, mm -hmm. okay, the trinity. Multiples. You have fours, a lot of multiples of four. Exactly. If you'll notice, a lot of times when I'm teaching, I'll draw a cross and write four points. Yeah. Well, it's just showing, you know, it first of all, it helps me to remember it that way. Yeah. But but it's 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 the four points of a cross. Mm -hmm. The Lord's name yeah. is Yahweh. Four Hebrew letters, Yud, He, Bob, He, Yahweh. Well, come on now. Four. There's four. Uh, seven. Yeah. You've seen lots of sevens. Yeah. You yeah. also see lots of twelves. Mm -hmm. Twelve is everywhere in the Bible. Twelve months of the cycle. year. Twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve uh, signs of the zodiac. Yeah. Oh. Twelve uh, disciples. Twelve disciples. Mm -hmm. twelve, twelve gates. Uh, twelve, twelve gates of the new city. Twelve. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything for fun. It's so powerful, man. It's so oh powerful. my god! I yeah. can't sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you do see. That's the thing. You start relating all this back. All truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. All truth has its origin in God. Yes. It's just, so there is no truth. No truth. It's just been converted from one for a counterfeit. Exactly. Yeah. It's all everything that you see out there of the the devil's bunch yeah, doing. Yeah. They stole it. It's not yes. theirs. It's ours. Right. It's right. ours. <laughs> and, and you know, it's yeah, we don't want to start now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now we're going to get started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have. Awesome. Our, look, look at this. Look, look at the, this. This bread. Now we have bread. Unleavened bread. This. This. This bread that Jesus said was broken. It's. It's this bread. This unleavened bread. Is a picture 
of the body, mm -hmm. the broken body of mm -hmm. the Lord. His, his mm -hmm. body was broken for us. And then we have um, the cakes. And the word, the word cakes here uh, means, it's so powerful, it means to pierce. Mm. These were like little, mm. have you seen the matzo bread that you buy in the store, the little thin, and they're all pierced with the mm -hmm. little? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, that's where they get that from. Really? They wanted these cakes that were not only unleavened, okay, bread, not only unleavened, but bread that was unleavened and pierced. Oh, yeah. So that's purposely dead. Yes. Well, yeah. It's a picture. It keeps it from. Yeah. It it's a it picture of Jesus. Mm. His body was pierced. Oh. oh. His hands, yeah. his feet. Yes. Yeah. The same. His as side, how... the piercing. Yeah. That's it's it. the same as how they would get the myrrh out of the, the bark from the tree. They would pierce mm -hmm. the bark. Right. Mm -hmm. To get the myrrh out. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. You do it for a frankincense. That's what they were really made for. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So powerful. So we have a broken body. We have a pierced body. He was giving them this. This bread was a picture to them. That's why when he sat in front of the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, they had all of this going on because they knew all of this. <laughs> You know, we just read it, oh, take eat, it's my body. Mm -hmm. Then he went to the cross. And, oh, we, wow, that's Then we go grab a cracker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Any old cracker will do. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. But when you start thinking yeah. on the, 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 the depth of the yeah. symbolism yeah. and what Jesus fulfilled by what he did. Yeah. And then there's there's the um <clears throat> oh this the, the wafers. Mm -hmm. And you know what the word the word for wafers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. It means to spit upon. That's right. It means to be spat upon. Think, spat. think like a vanilla wafer, the little menisco that's... Yeah. A wafer is a real thin yeah. little piece of bread. Yeah. Like just very, very thin. Yeah. Very, very thin. Like a cracker. Yeah. Okay. The vanilla wafers are really too thick to go mm -hmm. as a wafer, but, oh. but yeah, they're... <clears throat> Almost paper thin at times, I've seen. You're right. Yeah. yeah, they'll almost dissolve on your tongue. Yeah. You're very thin. So we have a broken body, a pierced body, and a spat upon body. What did they do to Jesus? That's what they did. They broke him. They beat him. You know, history The history says that when they beat his, they beat his back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, how many of y'all seen, I'm sure everybody here has seen The Passion of the Christ. Yes. I refuse to watch it. Do you? Yeah, it's hard to watch. I don't think my heart can take it. All right, yeah, I get it. I get it. Totally get it. Get it. I've seen it, and I cannot keep it together when I watch the part where they whip him. Yeah. And there's one part there where you know the actor Jim Caviezel he says that they actually he was wearing a suit to protect him, but one of the the whip ends. Got around the suit somehow and went like here and ripped. He, you know, and that's that's the part they left it in the movie, but that's the part where you see he's got his hands tied up on the post and he starts you know doing like that because he's in such pain that it, they filmed it because he was you know his his hands started trembling. They gave him hazard pay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but the, the 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 broken body. This pierced body that was pierced by nails and a uh, 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 spear. Mm -hmm. He was spat upon. This is his body that was broken, and he's offering it to us to it, to give us then the power mm -hmm. to become a high priest. Mm -hmm. So remember those four things that we learned last week: the high priest, huh? Judgment, yes. protection, mediator. Well, come on. I love Amazing. that. Preach. She's the star pupil. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Teacher's pet. Gold star <laughs> Teacher's <laughs> pet. I have to start working harder on my colored diagrams on the iPad. Right. <laughs> yes. He did all of this so that we could be that. That's so powerful. So powerful. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Wounded for our transgression. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wounded. 
mm, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Just, whew, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. He says, and thou shalt put them into one basket and bring them in the basket with the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and wash them with water. Mm -hmm. So he took them over to the door mm -hmm. of the tabernacle. Now, what was at the door of the tabernacle? What piece of furniture? Where's my answer? Mm -hmm. The next one. Mm -hmm. The labor. The labor. The labor. That's labor. right. The labor. There was the labor full mm -hmm. of water. And he said, now I want you to baptize them. There you go. They were to be baptized. This was a picture <laughs> of baptism. Now let me show you. Let's go. Keep your finger there in Exodus. And that's all right, Daisy. I love it. And let those tears flow. It's so powerful. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Romans, the sixth chapter. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite passages. I say that about all of them, but. Um, this time I mean it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Romans 6, verses 3 and 4. He says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. Here, here's mm -hmm. Get her some Kleenexes. That's no, so powerful. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just lift our hands. Thank you, Lamb of God. I feel your presence. I feel your spirit. Precious Lamb of God. I feel the Lord. The Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So he says, now, he said, I want you to bring them to the door, and I want you to baptize them. And what is baptism a picture of? We just read it. It's a baptism of death. Going down into Jesus' death and being raised again as a new person, a new uh, a new creature in Christ. So he said, I want this blood, I mean this bread. He said, then I'm going to take these priests and I'm going to wash them. They're going to go, in a metaphorical sense, they're going to die and be resurrected. They're going to come into a new place. Right. See, this is the place that Jesus told Nicodemus when he said, except you be born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom. Mm. you got to be born of the water. And of the Spirit to enter into the kingdom. Not to be saved, right. but to enter the kingdom. The kingdom. Oh. Yeah. Oh, never yeah. took the time to separate that in my yeah. head. Yeah. There's a difference in being saved and entering the kingdom. Very specific. Yeah. Oh, boy. Thank goodness I didn't put extra steps there. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <to you>. Yeah. <laughs> then I have never been baptized in water. You haven't? Mm -hmm. Okay. This. Okay. All right. So there is, we should study about that because there is, there is a definite power in going down into the water and being immersed in that water when you do it in faith. Now you can just go jump in a swimming pool and all you get is wet. But when you do it in faith and understand, Lord, I'm taking on your death, there is a, there are, Fiery swords, I call them, that just cut off, you know, the the flesh, cut off the old nature. Hallelujah. See, baptism 
I have a lesson on my, my channel about baptism. Um, you should probably go back and look for it. I'll, I'll find it and send it to you. Um, it, it's in one of my lessons. But it talks about, how, see, baptism is also a picture of circumcision. Right. The New Testament circumcision is that when you go into, into the water, there's a cutting off of the old man, a cutting off of the flesh, and a resurrection of new life. So pray about it. Whenever you want to get baptized, we'll we'll find a hole somewhere and we'll baptize you. <laughs> it's getting warm, so that's that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> wait till July. <laughs> when I see baptism, you gotta go back. Yeah. It's scary. It is well, yeah. Well, yeah, it is. that's not that bad though. Oh. You can you, know, you can get on your knees and just yeah, I mean, you can do it in any way that's comfortable for you. You know, uh, you can go down like this if you want to. But it's, it's a, it's a yeah. yeah, this is a, is a picture of death, you know. Yeah. I'm dying and I'm being, oh. you know, I'm, I'm going down helpless. You're kind of helpless. Right. Because the other person yeah, yeah. has your weight. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, but you feel their arm and everything behind you, so it's not I've like, never been baptized. Wow. It's not scary. Well, that would be a tremendous experience for you. I tell you what, the first time I got baptized was in Dallas, Te Dallas Texas. <laughs> Christ Gospel Church down here on Elam Road yeah, used to be there. there. Yeah. Yep. And um, I got baptized, and I came up out of the water, and I don't remember anything else. Until maybe an hour, maybe two hours, I don't know how long it was. I found myself in the corner in the back of the church in a Sunday school room where they had allowed me you know, to go change my clothes. But I was laying there in a pool of tears about this big around my head, um, still soaking wet. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened or where I went. I know I went somewhere for a long time. Wow. God did something tremendous in, in my life that day. It was an amazing experience. Not everybody has an experience like that. Mine was that way, though. It was it was a really powerful, mm -hmm. powerful experience. That is um, powerful. Wow. Even though I did not baptize the way you guys are talking about, when I was baptized... We did that. Mm -hmm. I was only one nonstop crying. Really? Yeah, yeah, I cried Ooh. the whole time. And then when I walk out, I told somebody the next to me, I said, I will never walk into this church again. God said to go somewhere. I mean, I mean to me, that was an incredible day. So I'm, I'm always wondering, does it have to be that? Because that day was very special. Yes. Well, no, it doesn't have to be anything it was a special day for yeah. you and if the lord did and if they did that and 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 the lord was in it and the lord met you there then like treasure crazy. yeah like treasure that pride. no that's that's yeah. absolutely a treasure yes it's yeah very special yeah ab yes ma'am absolutely absolutely and you know that's the thing we don't we, you know we don't want to get caught into rituals like well you got to do it the way right. we do it you know we you know there's been churches that will you know, some want to sprinkle and some want to dunk, and then they split the church over sprinkling or dunking, yeah. and it's that's all crazy. That's foolishness. You know, it has to be made. Mm -hmm. It's something that in your life that made a huge difference. Exactly. Yes, and that if day you, did. Then that was your baptism experience. Okay. That was your your yes, day. It was very special. Yes, ma'am. You treasure that yes. as your day. Yes. I feel the power of God yes. that you took on the name yes. of the Lord Jesus. Ooh, man, about to freeze to death. Mm. Is, oh. it, is it cold? No. Oh, okay. Just, okay. <laughs> Actually, it's hot, but I'm feeling the power. I'm like, oh, that's chills. crazy. It's the power. The AC is set to 69. <laughs> oh, it feels, it feels wonderful in here. <laughs> <laughs> There's an anointing over there. We remember things that made a significant difference in your life. That's right. That's yeah. right. I was 21. Yeah. 21. Wow. I've had God show up in a lot of unusual places. Where you wouldn't have expected. So yes. don't don't discount that. Oh no, I'm in total I agreement with this. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's so powerful. Thank you, Lord. 
And then, see, there's just so much here. I had all kind of plans to get through so much here. Let's just stick with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he told him here, he said, I want a bullock. I want a home burnt offering as a ram. And I want a, a ram for a peace offering. Now, these are three types of blood that were pictures of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the first thing he said, let, let, let's jump on down to uh, verse 10. And I guess I'm going to have to save the anointing oil for next week. Because verse 7, he says, Then thou shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it on his head and anoint him. I want to tell you about that anointing oil that went all over Aaron. It was so powerful. Was so powerful. Different oil than the one you talked about last week? No. It it's is the same. Same, oh. same oil. Same oil. Really yes. Know. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> he says, and then, verse 8, he dresses them. Now, at another time, I would like to talk to you about the eight garments that the high priest wore. He wore eight articles of clothing. And the significance of each of those eight articles of clothing. Absolutely mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Mind blowing. That he did this for us, and yet then he gives us the privilege of walking into that for others and helping him to redeem the whole world, redeem the creation. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. And thou shalt cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation, and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. So the next thing he does is he brings a bullock. Now a bullock is not, it's, it's, a, it's a bull, male, animal that has been castrated. So it makes him a very docile, gentle servant. Mm -hmm. And it is a picture then of our Lord, our Jesus, who's, who became the bullock. He became the, 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 the docile, gentle servant who yielded his neck to the Father's yoke and said, I will carry the burden, Father. I will carry the burden for the redemption of humanity. Mm -hmm. See, a bullock was a valuable animal in Israel. It was one of the most highly prized because they were an agrarian society. They used this animal to plow their fields. See? You know, a bullock was a bullock was a plow animal. Mm -hmm. Like an, or an ox. We would say an ox. Right. In our today we wouldn't call it a bullock, we'd call it an ox. And an ox is a is a castrated bull. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, an ox is a castrated bull that is gentle. He's been he made to be a servant, and he's easy to control. He's easy to put the yoke on, and he'll just plow, see? And it's a picture of our Lord, the blood of the Lord, that bullet blood that plows up the hardness of our hearts, mm -hmm. that plows up and removes the boulders and the hardness and the things that are keeping us from becoming fruitful for the Lord. It's that blood that will rip out the hardness and the hard ground of our hearts so that new seeds of love and light and life can come up. Mm. Yeah. You see mm. that? Yeah. Mm. And so they came in. Now, he said, Aaron and his sons, he said, I want you to put your hand on the head of, on the bullock. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we have, you know, the, the word just like put, put your hand on it, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. But in Hebrew, it's very specific. I can't lean on this. But they were to actually lean all of their weight. They were to lean, lean, lean on this animal as a part of the ceremony to show, show as a demonstration, I am dependent mm. upon the blood of this animal mm. to cleanse me, to break up the ground in my heart, to break up the hardness that is in me. I am dependent. And what are we? Dependent upon the blood of Jesus. Lord, if it wasn't for your blood, I need your blood. I'm depending on you. We sing that song. I need thee, oh, I need thee. <laughs> How are you going to get 
just started off and I'll start going back to black church. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. But leaning, leaning mm. on that blood, mm. that bullet blood. He said, so then, look at this. Oh my, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger. Remember that, Daisy? Thy finger. Specific. Hallelujah. And pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Let's look. Let's look. Oh, How long have I been going? About an hour. Almost. Not quite. Okay. Keep going. It's all right. Give me, all right. Give me five. No, actually, that is the, the bullet or whatever is the thing I now know. Mm -hmm. So I like the, now I know. Now you know. Mm -hmm. Moss. Look at this. Now, whew, here's the altar. <laughs> Ernie laughs at me because he knows I get all excited about this stuff. Ah. <laughs> uh, Yes, we do. Here's the altar. This is the brazen altar. And this altar mm. had horns on the four corners right here. And we learned, we studied earlier. Remember what we studied about the horns on the altar? They represent power. They represent aggressive and defensive power. The horns of a bull or a goat or any kind of an animal that has horns, you know, they Mm, they'll use those horns as weapons. Well, he said, he said, I want you to take the blood and I want you to pour it, put it with your finger on these horns. Because he was making a demonstration of the aggressive power of the blood. See, the blood of Jesus that pushes back everything that is unlike God, that is unlike his nature of love, that is unlike his nature of humility, the blood will push it back. Mm. You see, if you're having a struggle, man, mm -hmm. if we're having a struggle, we all have them, we have a struggle in our mind, in our heart, we're having a struggle with certain things, we, we can by faith go and say, Lord, I'm leaning. <laughs> I'm leaning on the blood. Mm -hmm. I need the blood of this animal. I need the blood of Jesus. Yeah. I need the blood of Jesus, the bullock in God's sanctuary, mm -hmm. to plow up my heart, mm -hmm. to break the hardness in my heart, to plow up the fallow ground so that a new fruitfulness and new seeds of love and light and life can, can dwell and grow inside of me. But the, the horns of this altar were for pushing back Everything that would offend God's holiness. Mm. Wow. wow. And then he said, I want you to take all of the blood and I want you to pour it on the ground all around that altar. All around the altar. He said, I want you to pour that blood. Now there's a lot of blood in a bull. I've seen animals, these animals have been slaughtered. I told you about that yeah. last week. I mean, you would, whew, there's so much blood in one of those animals. And, and so you talk about a lot, there was a lot of blood around this altar, all over the ground. Mm -hmm. There was blood everywhere. But see, this, this tabernacle, we're going to stand it up like this out of that altar. If you just stand it up mm -hmm. like a tree. The foundation. That's it. 
was the altar. Mm -hmm. And the roots, this blood went deep. The roots of the tree were in the blood. The roots of that tabernacle, the foundation of the stature of Jesus Christ, was in the blood that was poured out at the bottom of that altar. See, we stand in a foundation of blood. And, and, and everybody knows if you want to build a building higher, you got to dig the foundation deeper. Right? Yeah. So if you want to go higher in God, right. you got to dig deeper. Go deeper. It's, it's just a principle. Yeah. Yeah. It's a principle. And the more of the blood that we apply in our lives, the more of, Lord, I need your blood. I'm depending on your blood. Lord, help me with that thought. Help me with this attitude. Forgive me, Lord. I'm repenting. Remember, we yeah. talked about how to access the blood is repent. Repent, 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 repent. The more we repent, he's saying, oh yeah, here you go, sweetheart. Here you go. I died to give you this blood. Of course I'm going to give you the blood. He said in one place, he said, if, if, if you ask for bread, he'll not give you a stone. If you say, Lord, I need your blood, well, well yeah, of course, that blood cost me my life. Mm -hmm. That blood cost me my son. Of course I'm going to give it to you. And he'll pour out that blood. And the, and the deeper this blood goes, right. the higher our spiritual building will go. And the higher we will grow in God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He says, and thou shalt take all the fat, that verse 13, that covereth the inwards, and the caul that is above the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, and burn them, Upon the altar. But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung thou shalt burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. Oh, that's so powerful. Mm. So he said, There's certain things. I want the blood poured out, I want the blood on the horns. But the only thing that got burnt on the altar that actually got burnt was the, was the, the, um, Let's see, let me read it again. The fat that covers the inwards, yeah. the inner, the, the belly fat, <laughs> the inner fat. He said, you cut that out and you pull all that out. See, that's the fat that goes around the interior of the, uh, of the heart. Okay? Mm -hmm. This fat, what does fat do when it touches fire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw, you ever seen a grease fire? Oh, you ever seen a, a skillet catch on fire? Huh? I've made a few. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, if you throw fat on a fire, you know, it's like meat fat or Crisco mm -hmm. or any kind of oil. Yeah. See, fat speaks of zeal. Right. When zeal touches the fire, it makes the fire burn hot, hotter and higher and brighter. So when the priest would take all of this inward fat that is in this book, it is a picture of the zeal that Jesus had, the fire of love that he had inside that to, to serve his father's house and to serve his father. And when he took all that, he said, I want that zeal on my altar because it's going to, the father's going to smell, smell the zeal, smell the fire. It's a sweet smelling savor. He smelled the love of his son. The zeal that his son had to please him. And it made the fire burn brighter and the father just loved it. He loved it. It was a sweet smelling savor. And then he said, he said the fat that covered the inwards and the call. The call is like the gallbladder. It's a cleansing organ. And he said, and the, uh, that is above the liver and the two kidneys. So he says, the call, the liver, and the kidneys, all of these are cleansing organs. So he's speaking of the cleansing power of the blood of that bullock mm. that cleanses every impurity, everything that is not 
clean, everything that is infectious, everything that is not good. He said that he said, I want that fat and that zeal and that cleansing power on that altar. He's speaking to us of the zeal in the blood, the cleansing power of the blood, the power of the blood, the stability of the blood. Come on. All right here, all in this one offering, he's giving different pictures of what the blood of Jesus can do and does for us. He said, hallelujah. And he said, the flesh and the skin, take that outside the camp and burn that with fire. And there was a use for that even. <laughs> there was things they did with that. It was taken outside to a place of ashes where the lepers could go. The sick who couldn't come in and they could take the ashes of that sacrifice and rub it on their skin and it would heal them. All of it, all of it a picture of Jesus. Let's be know if I'm so far out there outside the camp, I can't even get to the sanctuary. He's he's got a provision for me out there. Mm. He's got a provision for me. He gave his body to be burned on that altar. He died on that cross to cleanse me of my leprosy. When I was so far outside the camp, I couldn't even get it, couldn't even go see the priest. Powerful, powerful. Well, I guess I'm going to stop there. I had big visions of telling you about the two other rams, the whole burnt offering ram and the peace offering ram. And then I was going to tell you about the oil that was poured on the head. And so I didn't. You did. Last, last right. week. Right. Well, I mentioned. I, mentioned. <laughs> I, remember. I, remember. I didn't really I tell you. What's that, sister? I think I have some of those oils. I want to go look in the collection. Oh, okay. I yeah. Not right now, though. Cinnamon? Yeah, it was cinnamon. cinnamon. M-Y something something. Yeah, it was um, cinnamon. I've got it written down. M-Y something. Myrrh. Myrrh. Myrrh, yeah. I've got cinnamon and myrrh. See, frankincense. One is so much. And I've got frankincense sitting right here. Yes. I did not remember. What I remember was you said about the horn. You said the horn is the same structure as the birds and a feather. I remember. Yes. Yeah. Let me show I, I'm going to tell y'all one thing, and then we're going to close. Can I tell y'all one more thing? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm sorry. No. Every time. Yeah. I'm just a, I just get excited. Now, we learned how that he dressed Aaron and his sons. He put all these yes. garments on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all this. And then he, the, there was blood that was sprinkled all over their garments. There was oil and anointing that was poured all over them. So, you know, Aaron walked around, and his sons, I mean, they walked around smelling fragrant. I mean, yeah. there was a beautiful smell, although they were butchering animals all day long, right? Mm -hmm. But even, uh, go over to Numbers, the 20th chapter. Okay, let's start in verse 25. <clears throat> now, this is when it's time for Aaron to die, okay? He's going to die. But remember, he's wearing these beautiful garments, right? Yeah. Do any of you remember the story when Aaron and Miriam rose up against Moses? Have you ever read that story? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. Okay, it's an interesting story. I don't have time to go there, but we'll go there some other time. Miriam, Moses' sister, and Aaron, Moses' brother, started complaining against Moses, saying, who do you think you are? You know, you're all that. And then, you know, you're God's man. Well, we're, we're, I'm a priest. Look at me. And Miriam's like, well, I'm a prophetess. You know, we got power too. Hmm. And God said, Psh, smoke, smoke Miriam with leprosy. Hmm. Smote her with leprosy. But he didn't smite Aaron with leprosy, although Aaron was just as guilty. You know why? Because 
He was wearing these beautiful garments and he had all this anointing oil on him. God wouldn't destroy the picture because death could not touch the high priest. As long as he was wearing these garments and he had this anointing, I feel powerful. Well, that's why when, when Aaron gives the garment to the son, he says, <laughs> he says, oh. You said it. Yeah, that's he exactly out. right, He stepped Daisy. out from under the anointing and the covering. Yeah. Say, say again. He stepped out from under the anointing and the covering. Exactly. When he passed it to, you know, he, he, to Yeah, he couldn't die. That's right. the thing I was going to show you. Oh. Look at this. And see, and God said to Moses right here, and verse 26, I'll start at verse 26. Numbers 20, 26. And the Lord says, And strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eliezer his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. There. The minute they took these garments off. He said, okay, Aaron, it's time for you to die. He took him to the top of the mountain, took his son. He took his all those priestly robes off with all that blood splattered everywhere, with all that oil. He took, all, you know, you imagine those things must have smelled so fragrant. And he took them off of Aaron and he put him on his son. And Aaron killed over. He couldn't die. Because he had the garments on. Mm. Leprosy couldn't touch him because he had those garments on. And it's a picture of us. Now, as we, when we spiritually, when we carry that, that anointing oil of Jesus Christ, when we partake of that bread at the communion table, that blood at the communion table, we walk with him, then death cannot touch us. Well, yeah, our bodies will die eventually, but spiritually, we have eternal life through Jesus. That's the power of the, of, of the priesthood. It's, it's just so powerful. Anyway, I just want to share that with y'all. He couldn't die. He couldn't die until God had Moses take the garments off of him. Something very special about the priesthood. You know, anointing of the priesthood is on you. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Now all four make sense. Because when you talk about a mediator, I remember I asked about that. Is because before we had to go through that, but now because we're priests, we can just go directly to God. Yes. Back then, the, the priests are also healers. Yes. We, we have the ability to heal. Yes. And then the judgment, I love what you said, because I, when I tell my husband about that two thing, <laughs> uh -huh. and yes and no, is that two little two things in there? And then now the protection... It's that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now it all makes sense. It all makes sense. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> preach it to him. That's preach it. Because that'll yeah. help you remember yes. the more yes. you preach That's it to him. Yeah. And 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 it's mm -hmm. and it's all in Jesus. Yes. It's all found in Jesus. Yeah. You see. And see, this is why they were so guilty. Mm -hmm. They were so guilty when they crucified Jesus. You think they didn't know who he was? They had yeah. the high priest was yeah. there. He had this breastplate. Right. That's why mm. he said the high priest Caiaphas. The Bible says he said, "Well, one must die for the nation." In other words, he knew he had enough wow. sense to know because of this breastplate that he had. We're going to go ahead and kill him, but he's the sacrificial lamb for the Shh. nation. He knows. He knew that, and he still put him. They still knew, and that was why their sin was so great. So great. That's right. Yeah. Um, if they knew and they proceeded, yet it was fulfilled. But it was to fulfill the prophecy too. Yes. So I kind of like laugh when it's like they had to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. You know, maybe I'm still connecting some dots here, but mm -hmm. well, see that goes in. What goes into the now? Like predestination free will and versus, free will. yes <clears throat> because i mean okay back to square one i thought i had that one resolved well i can teach you about predestination <laughs> and free will right they're both yeah 
we can't even get into that. <laughs> not tonight. Yeah. But not tonight. That's but a... yeah, there's predestination and there's free will. It's like Paul said over in Romans. Um, I think it's Romans 9. He said, shall the thing formed say to the potter, why hast thou made me thus? In other words, if I'm the vessel, he's the potter. Do I have the right to say, well, why did you make me like this? No. Yeah. He said, I made you to do what I called you to do. You're part of my plan. Mm. But then he still gives us free will. That's right. So how does that work? Yeah. Yeah. I always well, find that really. Well. We can do a lesson on it sometime. It'll be so clear when I finish. Yeah. <laughs> There's something in my mind. I, I, I thought I had like, it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm like, this was poor not priest bad. Bad. for me. Yeah. It's almost kind of like... Um, but if they had the relationship between man and woman, because when you first got together, it was that spark. Mm -hmm. And it was when you first accept God, it was very exciting. Mm -hmm. And then as, yeah, as you really get to know that person, mm -hmm. you can be God, you, it, it's like in China, we say, you need a, you need a, the spark to get married, but as time goes, that person becomes your family. Right. The more you know, yeah. the more you love God. Yes. yes. Yeah, it, it's the same. More mature level. A Not a... Exactly. Yeah. It's more it's of, a, of a of a just like walking with God and doing life every day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. With it's Him. Part of your life, you don't yes. want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to understand that. Yeah. It's yeah. so powerful. So, yes. This morning, so what you're saying about him being covered awesome. in the blood and the oil mm -hmm. and how he could have died. This, right this morning, I was reading in Isaiah. And it gave a picture. It says, When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. So there's that washing yeah. away. And shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And the Lord will create mm -hmm. upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assembly a cloud and smoke by day and a shining a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. Mm -hmm. And there shall be a tabernacle for mm. shade in the daytime <laughs> from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. Yeah. It's like we're so protected. Yes. We That's are. Right. Not just Aaron, but right. we, we are, are so protected. He is our tabernacle. He is our yeah. tabernacle. That's why he said if any man be in Christ. Oh, now you're going to start something. <laughs> now you're going to start something. <laughs> Can you just get... Man. Ooh. This business is in a word of prayer, bro. <laughs>